Hey everybody, I am back. Welcome to How to Find Your Soulmate Without Losing Your Soul, 21 Secrets for Women. The top 10 guys to avoid is our topic still, and we are wrapping up these, y'all, because we've gone through a lot of content with these and really dug deep, but it's time to wrap these up. So if you haven't been before, welcome. My name is Annalise Gomez, and tonight we are going to talk about the older guy and the potty mouth. And when we talk about these and you hear these titles, don't just, you know, be quickly turned off to the concept or the idea of talking about this because um, there's some really valuable information in here. Um, Some parts of the book um, I don't totally agree with, but the majority of the book I really, really think is very valuable. So if you'd like to join me tonight in discussing these, um, feel free and let's chat. And if you've watched my videos before, you will notice that I will read some stuff in the book verbatim and then share personal stories in between. So um, just if you're new, that way you're kind of clear on how uh, how these talks go. <laughs> so anyway, um, the older guy, let's start with that one. In the book, I'm going to read a, a section here and it says, what's dangerous is that older guys who typically lack the social skills to date women their own age know how to make younger girls feel wanted often younger girls are in love with the feeling of being wanted because sometimes they don't even want themselves that is very interesting <laughs> when i read that line i was i was really um i was really taken back to how I felt when I when I dated a, a much much older guy than me. I was uh, 17 and the guy was uh, actually 29. And um, I wouldn't even say it was a dating relationship. It was more of a situationship, I call it. Um, but definitely one of those relationships that was very deeply unhealthy. That was a secret from my my parents. They didn't know, and it was a very unhealthy, toxic, manipulative relationship. And it makes a lot of sense when I read this line. Um, clearly that individual didn't have enough social skills to date a woman that was his age. I mean, at the time I was really a child. So, um, I find this line interesting because it's true. Older guys do know how to make younger girls feel wanted and they prey upon that vulnerability sometimes in girls because they're trying to make up for that lack thereof of social skills that they don't have to date women their own age. So I do believe that that is accurate um, to, yeah, to a degree, absolutely. So for younger girls out there, I really encourage you to analyze why you would want to date an older guy, to analyze the reasons why behind that and to look at how he makes you feel. Does he make you feel wanted? Um, Is he really a good guy of faith? Does he have good character? Because I'm not, with this section, I'm not against a woman dating an older guy. I'm absolutely against a teenager dating an older guy, 100%. That is just, it's illegal and it's not right. But um, when it comes to, as an example, say a a 19-year-old, or a 23-year-old or a 20-year-old dating a guy that's, you know, 30 or 29 or even even like 28 or say older than that, um, that's something I really encourage you to analyze deeply because he's much, much older than you. And I encourage you to analyze um, his character first and foremost. Is he a man of faith? What is his character like? What is his sexual history like? That's something that's really important to think about. Don't be so caught up in how he makes you feel, but really analyze who he is as a man because that's what's going to um, really give you the insight if he's the man you want to marry or not Um, because whatever his habits are now is going to be what it's going to be later in marriage for sure. The book does go on to say that generally speaking, older guys know one very important fact that younger girls are more likely to consent to sexual advances because they're eager to win a man's approval. As they earn a woman's trust, they will simultaneously wear down her innocence. I thought that part of the book was very interesting as well. And I think what's also interesting to note here, um, 
is this. Girls that are in that category that I shared, you know, this that age gap I just shared, are really in a season of trying to figure out who they are, what they stand for, what they believe in, what their morals are, um, what, you know, ground they stand on, their independence. And um, they're easily, easily persuaded at that age. Now, I'm not saying, you know, once you hit a certain age that you're no longer, you know, vulnerable because I really believe that women are um, easily emotionally uh, manipulated sometimes. And I think that really goes back to the Garden of Eden with Eve, when the devil um, spoke to her and tempted her to take part in sin. And I really do think that um, that's why traditional marriage is so important, that the man is the spiritual leader of his wife in a whole, excuse me, in a healthy, holy way to help lead her. Not that women can't lead themselves, because I know some people are going to say that. You can lead yourself, but I don't think that um, in its entirety, leading oneself as a woman is always uh, the wisest way to go if you have a really great spiritual leader in your house like your husband. And that's a topic for another day. But I think it's interesting here that the book says that generally older guys know what an important fact that younger girls are likely to consent to sexual advances because they're eager to win a man's approval. I also think this goes back to our relationship with our fathers. Um, did our fathers, you know, teach us our worth, teach us about the type of man that we should be with? Did our father even model love to us and show us that we were worthy of, of true and good love, of healthy love? Um, that's another another part there. But this is why I'm very against young, young girls dating guys that are much older than them. Again, I'll say it, you know, an, an age gap of, say, six years and up, because um, sometimes young girls don't know where they stand in life yet. I mean, I know for me anyway, maybe, maybe it was just me, but I know for me, at that age, 21, 23, 20, 19, I was still figuring myself out, figuring out my style, figuring out what I wanted to be in life, figuring out where I wanted to go in life, where I wanted to move, what type of car I wanted to own, um, just what my morals were, like what I accepted, what I wouldn't accept, how I, you know, would let guys treat me, how I wouldn't let guys treat me. I was really figuring myself out. And now that I've come to the age of 27, I really feel strongly in a lot of things. I'm very um, opinionated, I guess you could say, in certain things now because I, I feel like I have a mind of my own and now I've come to a place where I feel grounded in what I believe and I can't feel swayed by certain things, especially by immature guys. So um, I really encourage you to, again, analyze this guy you're considering to date if he is much older than you and analyze if you feel that you have, um, maybe for the lack of a better word, grown up enough. Because I really feel that sometimes when older guys are looking to go after younger girls, it's so unfair because that girl has not even had the time to seriously, in all honesty, grow up to find herself. I don't like the word grow up because it's kind of a turn off, but to find herself. And I really encourage you, find yourself first because he's already found himself. He's had plenty of time, but you haven't. So find yourself. I really encourage that. Find yourself first. And lastly, as we wrap up this section, it states here that it's exciting for a young girl um, when an older guy is interested in her because the female brain matures two to three years earlier than its male counterpart the immaturity of guys her own age may absolutely turn her off it feels exciting to rise above them but young women must realize that mature guys don't date younger girls if the guy were so mature he'd be dating women his own age now again i'm not against a girl getting married or dating a guy that's older than her but when it comes to this age gap, again, the age gap that I've been talking about this whole video, um, a guy of 30, 29, 27 shouldn't be dating a 19-year-old girl. 
or maybe not even a 20 year old girl, to be honest, because, um, again, she hasn't had that time to truly find herself and, and girls out there, like, I get it. We are not attracted to guys our own age for the most part because a lot of them lack that maturity. So I totally understand. But at the end of the day, if you find yourself considering this type of relationship or you're in this relationship where the guy is older, just analyze the man's character, analyze his speech, his style. Is he classy in how he speaks to you? Is he classy in how he conducts himself in public, how he talks to your family? Um, besides how he treats you, you know, does he treat you like a lady? Is he a man of faith? Does he believe that he should be the sole provider of the family to defend and protect you and to protect, um, you know, his, his children's livelihood and care for them by being the provider, not just relying on you to lean on (laughs) all of that stuff. So again, I'm not against dating an older guy, but I am um, definitely an advocate for you considering these things because they're very, very important. Alrighty, I'm moving forward now to the potty mouth. This is probably one of my favorite chapters because it gets on my nerves the most. (laughs) But anywho, um, I want to share this with you guys because this really hit me as I started looking through relationships that I've had with others and um, I see the correlation now. So hopefully this helps you too. But it says here that, to put it politely, Mr. Potty Mouth is a boyfriend who has a real problem with his expressive language skills. His speech may revolve around his wandering eyes or also an unfaithful heart. For example, a woman emailed me saying that I was walking with my boyfriend and some of his friends and he saw another girl And him and his buddies started talking about how hot she was. And I felt really disrespected. How many of us women have been in this scenario? I know I have countless times. And it's made me feel very hurt. Um, I wouldn't say disrespect, a little disrespected, but, but more hurt. That they would even talk about something like that literally in my presence. Um, and it felt very unfaithful to me. And looking at this... I never thought of a potty mouth, Uh, what's the right word for this, being displayed in this form. I've always thought of a potty mouth as being a guy that cusses a lot, but a potty mouth can also be a guy that speaks um, lustfully of other women right in front of you or not even in front of you. So I thought that was a really good point um, to consider that a potty mouth can also be that and can also reveal the true intentions of his heart, which is really uh, frightening actually, but is also a good thing um, to forewarn us of uh, what we're getting into. Later on in the book, it says that a second type of potty mouth is the man who sounds like he learned his vocabulary from the wall of guys in the bathroom stall. (laughs) He may joke or talk about sexual things in a very casual or perverted manner to his girlfriend or other women in order to see the reaction. If she knows that sex is something that demands great reverence and she knows how a true gentleman should act, she should be repulsed by his immaturity. Oh my gosh. This one has happened to me too and I'm sure it's happened to you. And um, girls as women, we have got to stand up for requiring men to be more gentlemanlike around us. We really, really have to because this isn't appropriate. And this is also a key indicator that that guy is immature and it shows that he doesn't reverence sex at all or nearly to the state that he should. And I'll be the first to say, unfortunately, I have found myself in circumstances where... um, um, I think I just said myself. (laughs) I'm sorry. I have found myself in circumstances where I've entertained this type of talk out of uncomfortability, which may not make sense to you, but I just kind of know how I operate. And after the fact, I really processed why I was so uncomfortable and um, really was upset that I even entertained that and I didn't stand my ground. So I'm still developing you guys. I mean, yeah, I said I'm 27 years old and I feel grounded, but I'm still becoming grounded. And I think we're constantly 
evolving and learning and grounding ourselves as we grow. Alrighty, I'm going to wrap this up because you know I can talk for a while on this stuff, but the third and final type of potty mouth is the guy who verbally abuses the girl that he's with, verbally attacks her, um, whether it be about her body, her heart, or her brains, or her sexual behavior. One girl mentioned that her boyfriend of two years often called her fat or stupid, but then would say he was kidding. Um, And the author made a a joke about, well, maybe she should run over his toe and say, oh, I'm just kidding. I thought that was kind of funny. But the reason a guy tears down a girl's self-esteem is because his self-image is also extremely low and perhaps honestly even lower than hers. Her presence by remaining in that relationship teaches him that it's acceptable for him to treat her abusively. How do you build your self-esteem? You get it by making smart decisions, surviving painful moments, and coming out a stronger woman. For starters, dump anyone who doesn't treat you with respect and avoid such guys in the future, and you will be so surprised as to how good this feels. I, uh, gosh, yeah. I, I, I remember there was a very pivotal moment for me when I was, hmm... I believe I was about 24 and a half years old or 25, somewhere around there where I really decided that was it. I had to make a change in my life and be my biggest cheerleader because nobody was going to do it for me. If I wanted to, you know, be treated better, I had to require that I would be treated better. And just reading this line again about building self-esteem, you get it by making smart decisions surviving painful moments and coming out a stronger woman. And I remember I was faced with having to make smarter decisions, which meant I either drop the guy or I stay with the guy. And it's going to affect me either way. And it's going to be painful (laughs) either way and more painful if I drop the guy because I really want it to work, right? And I remember finding myself multiple times requiring this guy to, you know, step up, be a gentleman. Um, this is what I was requiring because I didn't require it before. And I remember a very (laughs) vivid scene in my kitchen, uh, in in my apartment at the time. And I was so upset about something that he had done. And I was like, Nope, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to him about this. I have to communicate this. I'm not going to just let it go under the rug. And I remember I was so upset. I was talking, but crying. And I had the kitchen towel in front of my face while I was crying. (laughs) It was just, it was a mess, but I got my point across and it was a very good conversation. And, um, what was interesting is he never even thought of my comment that I made in that way. And it really opened his eyes and he was grateful for it, which was very interesting. Um, So communication is really important. It's so, so key. But to become that stronger woman and that woman of self-esteem, it absolutely requires us to make smarter decisions and to go through those painful moments of confronting something that we are uncomfortable with, even if it means we lose the person. So uh, take heart, ladies. Take heart. Becoming a strong woman of strong self-esteem sometimes takes time. So take heart and just understand that through experience and practicing, um, being your best cheerleader and requiring goodness and requiring a gentleman and requiring class is a good thing. It absolutely is a good thing because if you marry this guy, do you want your kids to be listening to somebody like that, that talks about women like that, that has a bad potty mouth, that talks about sex in an unreverent way? No, we don't want that for our kids. We want a leader. We want a man. That's what we want. We want a man, a leader that's wholesome, that's good, that um, is loving and strong and mature. That's what we want. So with that said, God bless you. I hope this blessed you. Um, Like and subscribe, comment if you'd like. I really hope that these videos are helping somebody out there. Have a wonderful night. I hope to be back on camera soon. It's just been a very busy, busy, busy two weeks. Um, But hopefully things will start slowing down a little bit. God bless you and take care. Good night.